So, here is my uh, blown ribbon burner forge that I've just just completed. Um, and I guess the purpose of this video is to help guys with, especially with some things that it, it didn't, it, it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of answers there um, and where to find things. Uh, the way I built this forge was it's got a hinged door, so I can um, open this up, and there is a large chamber. Um, I've got a fire brick in the back hole just to kind of block it. Uh, uh, I probably won't take that out unless I, I need to pass something through. Now... <clears throat> I don't know if you can see. I made a rather large uh, box on the top to hold my burner. Uh, reason being is I wanted room to be able to pack K wool down in here. And what I did was I packed it full of K wool and then mixed a slurry of uh, Rutland's um, stove cement, uh, mixed it with water, thinned it down, and just coated the top of that with it. So uh, it, it made a nice hard barrier. My actual hole uh, inside the forge uh, is just big enough for this uh, three by three tubing to fit down inside um, and not much wiggle room. It fits in there pretty snug in the hole, but then this this box provided me a good spot to to place K wool. The inside of the forge has um, uh, two inches of K wool and probably three quarters of an inch of Mizzou and the bottom has a good uh, two inches of Mizzou um, to build the bottom up. Um, what did I use to cast my ribbon burner? Now I see a lot and if you want to know how to make a ribbon burner there's a ton of videos out there on how to make one but nobody really states what they used to cast their head with. I used Mizzou I, I want to say it's Mizzou Plus castable refractory. It's a heavy duty castable, um, and it worked excellent. Uh, I've I don't know for a fact, but I've been told that castellite won't hold up and and that the uh, the head will crumble. Okay, some other things that was uh, trying to figure out. Now I used an inch and a quarter black pipe for all my piping. Except I did use PVC down here where it goes to the blower. Um, I have seen some people use one inch pipe. And two inch pipe was kind of hard to get a hold of uh, up here in Alaska. Um, I, and I would have went with an inch and a half. But I couldn't find a T for an inch and a half. So I went with an inch and a quarter. And it worked fine. So... Um, in the actual burner head, how many holes do you need in that head well from what i have been what i've found on the interweb was that you needed enough holes to match the volume of the inside of whatever it is that you're using whether it's a two inch pipe or whatever so this is an inch and a quarter now how do you figure that out you could be a math genius like my youngest daughter and i could have told her and she could have figured it out instead i just Stacked crayons up inside of here until I couldn't put it anymore. Counted the crayons, and that's how many holes went in my burner head. Um, you, apparently, you, you, you should match the volume or the area of the inside of this pipe. So the other thing is I used crayons. If I was to build another one, I would use plastic drinking straws. They're uh, a lot easier to get out. The crayons, you got to drill them out, and it makes a mess. And, and uh, the plastic drink straws, you can just pull those out. Now, uh, I, I'll be clipping in a video on how I made this, how I made the gas injector. But some of the things uh, that you generally have trouble finding, you do need a needle valve that's gas rated. And on Amazon... I can't remember how much it was, but it wasn't very much. It wasn't, uh, you know, some of the forge places and whatnot sell a valve and it's rather expensive. And this is on Amazon. Hot Max heavy duty needle valve. Uh, it was, I had it like in three days. So that's where I got my needle valve. 
Originally, I had a ball valve here, and uh, at the local plumbing store, I picked up a gate valve for 20 bucks, and that got installed. Now, as far as the blower, so hopefully you can see how I've connected the blower. This particular blower comes with a collar that I want to say it creates a four-inch end. It does. So what I did was I put the collar on. This boot fit over it perfect in the plumbing section of your hardware store. Then I put a three inch plug in it that had uh, inch and, uh, I forget what this is. I wanna say inch and a half, and then an inch and a half to an inch and a quarter reducer on up. Now the motor, the blower is actually a bouncy house blower. And this is a one horsepower blower. And I probably didn't need one that big. This thing puts out, uh, I want to say, no, nah, I can't remember, but you can look it up. It's a lot. And it's a positive pressure blower. I could have got a, a half a horse blower and been just fine. But this one was bought by somebody in return to Amazon. It didn't suit their needs or whatever. It was brand new. And I got it for like 50 bucks on Amazon, and a, and a half a horse motor was even more expensive than that. So I bought the this because uh, it was it, it was used, and when I got it, it's brand new. It doesn't have a mark on it, and it doesn't look like it's ever even been plugged in. I think somebody must have bought the wrong thing or something and returned it, and I got it for 50 bucks. So the one thing I want to mention about these bouncy house blowers is they're not intended to be uh, run to free air. In other words, uh, you don't want to use this like a weed blower. They are intended to have back pressure. And I and when, when you turn this on, you can actually feel air coming out over here. Uh, and I think that's uh, intended to help cool the unit. It states right in the instructions with the motor that um, do not run into free air that it has to have back pressure otherwise you'll burn the motor up so it runs great um, one thing about a uh, ribbon burner uh, forge is that you have to kick the motor on first before you uh, before you turn your gas on they say uh, well, it's, you know, because this is a, all of this is a mixing chamber. From here to here is a mixing chamber, and there's a mixing chamber in there. And you don't want that gas to come back. So always turn your blower on first. So let's kick this thing on real quick. Uh, By the way, this is also from Amazon. It's a Kibu 20 PSI and with a gauge on it, works great. Don't need much. fan here take the little fan on believe it or not that's all you need and this thing gets hot now it is really you you can fine-tune this with this this and that you can get this thing just 
running sweet. So always shut your gas off first. So, one thing I'll say about this regulator, if you shut, because I was trying to leave everything tuned in and then I would just shut this off. If you shut the gas off here, um, let me shut this little fan off. If you shut the gas off here, before you shut it off here, when you crack the gas back open, nothing will happen. It's so this regulator's got a check in it. You have to shut it off here first, and then you shut it off there. Otherwise, when you when you turn your gas back on, you won't have anything. It won't it won't won't operate. So always shut it off here first, and then go to there. So that's the the ribbon burner forge. Now we'll go to the hardware store, and I'll show you all the components that I used to build this this gas injection. Okay, so we're here at my favorite store, Lowe's. And the reason I love Lowe's so much is because they treat veterans and active duty members excellent. And they give you a discount on everything, absolutely everything. So how did I build my gas injector? Okay, so I was using a quarter, in, uh, inch and a quarter black pipe. So we have our inch and a quarter black pipe T. Then you need to install a inch and a quarter to three quarters of an inch bushing so that's going to go in there so then next we need our gas port so i made my gas port out of a half inch by eight inch and you'll cut this copper stub out and that's what a stub out looks like so that's going to end up going through there so so how do we get that in there okay the next component is going to be a male adapter copper adapter three quarters of an inch that's going to thread into here so now how do we secure this in that the next component is going to be a three quarters of an inch by half inch bushing now this bushing is got a crimp in it so it won't allow this to pass all the way through so what you have to do is grind or cut I think I just cut about that much off on a porta band and that goes in there actually about if you if you cut it off flush you're good to go so then this that allows this and you'll see it won't pass all the way through Trying to do this with one hand. Okay, so let's say that that was able to pass all the way through. Then this goes in like that, and you solder those components together. Now, this section, you want that sticking out about that far. You get this all tightened up, threaded together and tightened up. And you put this in there, and you determine how far it needs to go in. And I drilled a 16th inch hole right here so that it was facing up. Then you'll have the stub end of this sticking out. And you need this half inch by quarter inch female uh, fitting adapter. And it looks like that. And then that would be soldered on right here where, where this is at. And that's what your needle valve attaches to. So I hope this helps. And you can review the video and see what parts I used. Alright, let's move on. Alright, well thanks for checking it out. I hope that uh, this answers some questions for some people. And you know, if you've got, if you've got any questions that weren't answered, or you couldn't find it on the old interweb there, 
just uh, give me a shout. Uh, I'm willing to help anybody out that wants to build one of these. Uh, if you're in Alaska, uh, you know, just feel free to look me up and come on over and check it out. Anyway, take care. God bless. Uh, it's just, just after the Easter weekend. Had a fabulous Easter. Um, anyway, God bless. Uh, love from Alaska. Adios.